Welcome back, Steph, to the Your Inner Power series. It's so good to see you again. You too, Nico. You too. I want to tell you that I am so loving this series that we're doing. And that in every conversation, I am seeing so much. Me also. Yeah, I think there's just something about hanging out in this space and talking about this stuff that just naturally brings fresh thinking, new insight, you know, it's beautiful. Me too. So to recap, the last time we were talking about our natural state and how regardless of circumstances, ease, grace, and flow. And today I wanted to ask you of what gets in the way of that natural flow. And our question for today is what gets in the way of your natural creativity, joy, and inspiration? And how do we experience more of it? And with that, I'm going to throw this to you. <laughs> as ever, as ever. It's a great question. And as people who share this understanding, I think it's one of the most common questions we get. Is when I'm when I'm really up against it and I really want to create something or I really want to solve a problem, but I can't find the solution in my head. Um, what can I do about it? What can I do about it? Well, I think there is something about this understanding that we talk about, this inside out understanding that the, the the clue is in the words. I think that it's not something that you can teach or something that you can learn or something that you can uh, make happen with your intellect. I think it's called an understanding because when you understand what's happening and how it works, then we naturally fall into a space of flow and inspiration and creativity. So I've heard it described as... Um, we have this access to a deeper dimension in ourselves. We have a natural innate ability to connect with um, the intelligence behind the universe. And when we connect with that intelligence, we experience the things we've been talking about. We experience joy. We experience creativity. We experience inspiration. We just don't realize that that's what's happening when we're doing it. So what is available is a a resource, a facility, a potential that is way beyond our own mental capabilities, our own intellectual capabilities. So what happens when we are stuck and we can't find the answers and we're not feeling very productive or creative or inspired generally i would say that's because we tend to have a lot on our minds it's like <clears throat> when you're waiting outside of the exam hall and you know that this exam that you're about to take is going to determine your failure or success over the, the next period of your life, that's how it feels. We tend to get quite nervous about it. We tend to 
have a lot of thinking about what will happen if we fail. We have a lot of thinking about what we need in order to write down the right answers. And we get anxious and we get worried and we get nervous. So we walk into the exam hall, we sit down at the desk, we have a head full of that negative thinking, that anxious thinking. In my mind, I've heard it described as it's like a, an internet connection. You know, we have this cable that is that 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 is is carrying data and if the data that's in the cable is anxious nervous thinking it, that fills that fills the whole capacity or most of the capacity of the broadband cable the broadband connection and there's very little capacity for new thought for resourceful thinking for problem solving for being in the moment and being open to what the the intelligence behind the universe wants to give us when we see and this is where the understanding part comes in when we see when we catch ourselves in a moment of <clears throat> head full anxious thinking and we understand that it basically is not helpful in that moment when we know that it's not going to help us with the the situation at hand then it's possible at some point to allow that anxiety that worried thinking that overthinking to fall away and we can then become absolutely present with what needs to be done in that moment and then what happens is the broadband connection then clears up you know we now have all this capacity for fresh new helpful thinking that 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 always always comes to to aid us in those situations so we just need to be aware of what gets in the way and and in in the in the moment it's how much unhelpful thinking we have in our head and it's possible for us to let go of that we can come back to it later if we want to <laughs> But when you understand how it works, it just doesn't make sense to get in your own way of your own wisdom. To give to give you an example of this, I. Uh, I once uh, did a coaching seminar and I talked about this. I talked about flow. I talked about how uh, resourceful we are when we are not overthinking things. And there was one guy that came up to me in, at lunchtime and he said, I don't get what you're talking about. I don't understand. I don't I, I've never experienced that. So we talked a little. And he told me about what his hobbies were. And he told me about his passion for surfing. Apparently, he surfed all over the world in all sorts of different competitions. <clears throat> and I asked him, so when you're in a surfing competition, how much 
do you have to think through what you're doing when you're waiting for this wave to come and he looked at me and he said oh no you can't think you don't have time to think it would kill you you know you can't do that so i said that's what i'm talking about when we're not burdened by anxiety worry how we're going to figure it out we have a natural innate ability to be in the moment and do what's needed. And that comes with a feeling of inspiration. That comes with a feeling of flow. It comes with a feeling of joy and fun. And I think everybody has a story that they can tell about what it's like to be in the moment and to have that kind of state of mind where we're just not thinking, we're just being in the moment and doing what needs to be done. Mm, give me a moment. That that was there is a lot to to soak up. That was such a beautiful sharing, and I heard so much. And if I may share, as you were sharing, I'm reflecting on my own journey in this understanding. And I remember I had a really hard time with this. And I noticed the premises looking back. And some of my premises were, I thought creativity was a given. I mean, like some people are just really creative and some people are not. I had a premise that joy and inspiration were results of doing I, and people ask like, oh, what brings you joy? Go do more of that. Or, or where do you feel most inspired? Go to that place. Or what do you do that inspires you? It was always very much outside in. And I never questioned it until I came into this inside out conversation of the three principles and I had to question it. And to be honest, Steph, it really pissed me off <laughs> because it, it challenged me. I was like, what do you mean I don't have to do anything? Like I've worked really hard to, to do things that fill me with joy. I've worked really hard to, to like create habits and routines that give me inspiration. I've worked really hard to become a really creative person. And then I saw it that I was most creative and most joyful and most inspiration doing nothing and being with myself and I stopped fighting the premise or the premise stopped making sense to me if that makes sense to you and I saw that when I really saw it I saw the source of it coming from within and when I saw the source of it go figure more of it came through me I felt more times of inspiration and joy and creativity and it was like a light bulb went off. I was like, oh, it was a very, it was like, it wasn't an, oh my God, breakthrough. It was a very gentle, oh. And since then in my work as a coach, I've pointed other people to see more of that. And it, surprisingly what happens when people see more of it for themselves, more of it begins to cultivate for them. I was working with a founder recently. Um, he had grew a very successful e-commerce business in Thailand and it stagnated and he got bored. He got depressed because there was nothing to do in his business or he didn't see any areas of growth, even though it was very, very successful. And he was he like, he was making the money he wanted to make, but he was bored. And then as we started to talk, he saw something. And I believe the insight was he realized he likes to build things. And when he naturally realized that he, he realigned himself to be a builder and and that insight came from within Steph and that joy and inspiration, creativity natural, naturally followed. And within 40 days, his business grew by leaps and bounds into, and he connected with investors. And it was, it was a spectacular example of what's possible when you really see this. And also I want to share something I read um, from Elsie Spittle, who is an incredible teacher, mentor, and guide in this understanding. And she said that, you know, people often talk about you'll find natural creativity, joy, and inspiration in a quiet mind. And she said that, but that's not to say wisdom won't come to you when it needs to come to you. I believe we said this in the last episode too, that when wisdom needs to come, sometimes it comes in anger, in a moment of anger, in a split second, you'll see something. Or 
I think for me as a professional athlete, Taekwondo, it came in a split second of, oh, move here, move there, kick here. He's going to yeah. do this. Similar to your surfing person who, who just knew what to do in the moment. Yeah. And I think the biggest premise that had to change for me was seeing that creativity, joy, and inspiration wasn't a result of my doing, but it was a result of knowing where to look to find it. And with that said, I'd like to throw it back to you. Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. I think everybody has examples in their life of when they're in flow and, 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 there's a common misconception when we talk about you know there are certain words that are used like oh there's nothing to do and and <clears throat> just you know be calm and and uh relax and those are all those are all helpful but as you say the intelligence is behind life is always talking to us it's always guiding us sometimes we don't hear it because we're listening to something else but what i loved about what you said is that when we're listening to, when we're angry or when we're sad or when we are in meditating you know that intelligence is always there but it's it's when we're allowing that intelligence to come through us then i think the buddhists call it right action occurs at the moment we need it that that wisdom comes to us and we do what is the most obvious thing to do we don't think about it we don't second guess it so that's to me how the system works that's how the design is when we allow ourselves to be guided by this uh, bigger game then right action occurs when we get in the way of it it's a bit more hit and miss i love that i i recently was in a conversation and people and the person was bumping up against the word obvious and they didn't like it because they felt inadequate for not seeing it mm. and what i saw fresh in in and what you're sharing is the impartialness of and the impersonal of obvious yeah. in that it's not personal. It's just something that was always the next natural step. Just our thinking might have gotten the way so we couldn't see it. It's exactly. not it's not personal. It's not your fault. It's not nature's fault. It's just some things were in the way. And I love what you're sharing about when you drop into this, more and more things become obvious. And I, if I may share, since coming into this understanding, and to my surprise, non-action has become more and more obvious to me, that there really is nothing to do except be still. And in doing that, I've watched things unfold as they are meant to. I've watched problems solve themselves. And I have a lot more respect for it now yeah. of, of non-action, whereas before... My premise was non-action means you're lazy. And yeah. in truth is non-action couldn't be more aligned with what we're talking about. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah. It, it, the, 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 um, I think for me, non-action, and this has just occurred to me, is, mm. is is not not doing anything it's just allowing yourself to be moved it's allowing your it's allowing the the deeper part of us to take whatever action needs to be taken yes and with that said because to me what, what occurs to me what moves like what might someone might ask well what moves you and to me insight moves you and to me this is the perfect place to put a pin in this conversation because our next 
um, episode is going to be up the, about the role of insight and how it's built into the human design. And so to recap for today is, you know, what gets in the way of natural creativity, joy, and inspiration is simply our own muddy thinking, our own overactive thinking that, that blurs our vision of what was always in front of us and available to us. Mm-hmm. Is there anything else you would like to add to our to final thoughts on this topic for today? Yeah, I, I, I think as on as well as the 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 things that you just mentioned about what gets in the way, I think one of the biggest things that gets in the way is a misunderstanding of how the gift of thought works. How much we think that the more thinking we do the better the outcome the less lazy we are the more trying to figure it out and analyze it from every single angle we think that that's going to be more helpful but the opposite is true when you understand the role of thought you see that what's the uh the quote that that Thinking is a better slave than a master. Yes. So we don't want to give it the upper hand. We don't want to make it a master. We want to allow the natural innate ability we have to rise to the occasion as much as we can. Mm. Excellent. Thank you for your time, Steph, and for this wonderful, wonderful conversation. And I will see you next time. Bless you, Nikon. It's always an absolute pleasure. Thank you. Always a pleasure. Bye, Steph. Bye.